so here's where we stand with the uh, development of the uh, Waze cover or the bellows covers here. Chip flap, whatever you want to call them. The, uh, I cut one piece that is 14 inches wide by 28 inches long. It's going to go in the Z. And then I have two 18 inch wide by 16 inch long pieces which will go on the uh, front and rear Y axis uh, covers. What that leaves me with is a I think that's a 7 inch, 8 inch by 14 inch piece that's uh, left over and uh, I was thinking about doing something on the underside of the mill head uh, that would still allow air to go into the uh, casting there. I found some when I, when I was moving the mill head up and down yesterday with the bellows off there was a little bit of coolant that was coming out from behind the uh, ways and I think it's a good idea for me to protect that as much as possible since there are some uh, gaps in there where coolant can enter. I don't know what the geometry looks like behind it so I don't know how much of an impact it'll have but at the very least it'll keep chips from uh, coming up into here. We'll see how it goes. I haven't really figured it all out yet but that's the, uh, that's the basic plan. So there are the pieces and the dimensions of the pieces and here we go. Alright, this is just going to look like the Z axis bellows and a couple pieces of neoprene right now until it actually gets on the mill, but I figured I'd show it at this point. Now I uh, have made a few changes. First of all, I got M6 fasteners in here instead of M5, so I had to drill out the plastic uh, cover and the piece of angle iron stock that's on the bottom here in order to get the fasteners through, uh, but I needed something a little bit longer because of the uh, issues with potential issues with clearance on the inside. I inverted the bolts so the threads are facing downward and I've clamped two pieces of neoprene in between the uh, piece of angle iron and the plastic. Also the angle iron used to be on the inside of the plastic. Uh, that's the way I received it from Tor Tormach originally. Now it's on the outside clamping in between uh, simply because it wouldn't work any other way uh, the way I had the concept here. So. Um, not completely obvious yet what's going on. It should become obvious very quickly as soon as I get this installed. So give me just a second here. I don't know that it's actually much more obvious right now, uh, but this is the Z-axis chip cover and that one is going to be the Y-axis rear. So they're basically clamped between the uh, piece of angle stock and the bottom of the bellows here. Uh, I did run into a problem. They uh, got the camera at an angle, but you can see where the uh, head of the socket head cap screw going to the column interferes, or, or getting a tool in there would interfere with the, uh, the bolts that are sticking down that I added a little bit too long. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to be able to get a shorter bolt in there, but I'm going to try uh, see if that'll work. So that's the uh, that's the plan. This will this material should come up and. Clamp in behind here. Probably need some longer fasteners for that. The uh, fasteners that are in there are just long enough to uh, to do this task, and that's it. No extra. So they might be might need to be replaced. M5 everywhere on this machine. Maybe it's an industry standard. I don't know. It's uh, certainly not a standard from what I'm used to. So I've got to deal with that. I don't have any of those fasteners. So however that works out. But that's the idea. The installation of the neoprene sheet is coming along okay. I'm realizing more and more the further I go that because of the difficulty of assembly this is probably going to be easier if I put some aluminum strips in here uh, like behind the bellows cover and then bolt the neoprene itself to that aluminum rather than trying to uh, force it behind there. This is certainly not the easiest thing I've done in my life trying to get that, uh, that bolt inside. You actually have to lower the lower the z-axis a little bit to get some flexibility in the neoprene or some slack in the neoprene to get the bolt back behind there. And of course because the bolts are minimum length uh, they'd like to fight you when it comes to going through here. So working out a couple details like for example the way this uh, the way this lip is right here uh, as it when the head moves down this has a tendency to come up a little bit, which means that the uh, any coolant that's landing up here is going to want to come to the inside. 
So some of the things I'm looking at doing would be like folding the neoprene down and then putting a rivet or a bolt through there to hold it something like this so that it wouldn't be inclined to stay up and catch the coolant. Um, the uh, Putting all the pieces together again is a, is a pain. There's nothing easy about this, uh, trying to get everything uh, to connect properly. So not surprising. There's uh, certainly some advantage to buying the uh, Tormach equipment. It bolts on rather easily, I suppose. I've never, I've never used it, but um, I imagine theirs is more easy to install than this setup is. Uh, but that's what that's what you get when you actually pay for something rather than uh, try to avoid spending the cash on it. So here's what we got. I uh, got the z-axis here, the y-axis rear is coming together, and then the uh, y-axis front. Now this one is obviously compressed. I, I got to trim the material down a little bit. Let me, uh, get the machine rolling here. So, you get the idea. It's got to take up some space. So I've removed the stainless steel form cover off the front here so that I could work underneath. Uh, so there's the limit switch for the x-axis. So I'm still trying to work out exactly how I'm going to do this. It needs to fold up underneath. It needs to set up so that when it when it when the table moves this way, it doesn't jam the uh, material down in the bellows, and then I end up with the same situation I would have had with the chips in there anyway. So still working out those details, but for the most part, this is uh, coming together slowly. Just taking a little bit more detail than I anticipated, but that's all right, I guess. No complaints result should be worthwhile. So again, one last shot here. As much as I tried, I really couldn't avoid fabricating some sort of plate to stand off from the uh, uh, ways here so that I could get the neoprene sheet attached to it properly without having to struggle too much to, to connect it. Just too challenging. Now this will serve as a connection point for the z-axis and for the underside cover which I'm considering using. Uh, I did put some black electrical tape on the back side uh, that will actually interface with it uh, in case there's any galvanic interaction. I figure there's no reason to chance that so I decided to uh, protect it. But that's pretty much it. I'm going to also do that on the uh, something similar to this on the uh, y-axis front and then probably on the y-axis rear back here. Uh, haven't determined that, that it needs it for sure back here, but it will almost certainly need it here in order to have the um, neoprene sheet behave properly. So that's what we got. I'll we'll keep on working on installing it right now. So the chip guard mounting plate is now attached. Uh, fairly easy to attach, a lot easier to do this than the neoprene sheet for sure. I only have two holes in it, one on either side, because the casting is too close here for me to get a bolt through. I thought about rivets, but then I realized I'd like to remove it at some point without it being too terribly difficult to remove. So uh, this allows me to remove the plate here separately. Uh, I used 16th inch 6061. It's a little bit thin, uh, but I'm not concerned yet about whether or not it's going to bend. So we'll see. Shouldn't be an issue, but we'll see how that goes. So I'll keep doing the uh, installation here. So the Z-axis cover is in place fully now, as well as the uh, underhead flap that I thought would be a good idea. Still not convinced it's a good idea, uh, or is not a good idea. It certainly needs some trimming. My coolant manifold will not uh, fit up here without pretty substantial interference, so it would need to be trimmed back anyway. But the idea is it would keep the chips and coolant from splashing into the opening in the bottom of the mill here. And I might be able to pull off the same thing by trimming this piece back substantially, uh, something like from here down on either side, uh, just basically to keep the chips out away from direct access, which might work. Might not work. No idea really, but that's it. This one's done. Uh, I'll fiddle with the details of it later. 
like fitting it around the area where the spindle bolts to, spindle cartridge bolts to. Uh, next, I think I'm going to move on to the uh, uh, y-axis rear and see if that needs to be built the way I think it's going to be built. So here we are, the y-axis rear is just about done. I have a piece of formed aluminum there, 16th of an inch thick, 6061. The uh, material is bent at about a 30 degree angle or so to get some clearance between the material and the head. I did uh, put the material on the bellows side of the bellows cover rather than clamping it between the, um, the aluminum strip and the head so that there wouldn't be any way for material to get uh, coolant and uh, chips to get down between the uh, the bellows cover and the, uh, the the table here didn't want there to be any issues with that but that was an enormous pain to get the uh, screws in place the pan head screws are extremely small so the the fit on the uh, the fit on the drill hole that you put through the aluminum has to be small and then getting it in the right position is a pain as a result so I had to make some adjustments there now this uh, this material it was originally 16 inches long. I've probably taken three or three and a half inches out of it to get it to uh, fit right. And then basically, what I'm going to do is just set it down on top of it like this. Uh, something along those lines. A little bit difficult to see, I'm sure, with the light or lack of and the dark material. But that's basically the idea. I wanted to document it before I got any further and bolted the components together. So that's it. I'm going to connect it now. Out of all the connections I've made so, so far, this one was by far the easiest to install. Uh, easy access underneath with all the uh, the play and the material. I, I have the table back three inches from the front, uh, the reference position for Y. Uh, just some M6 bolts, nuts and washers holding everything together. Very easy for that one. Now it's on to the Y axis front. All right, the Y-axis front is 99% complete. Got a little bit of trimming to do, and I'm going to work through the uh, pass-through of this cable clamp here uh, so I can get the neoprene behind it. I figure that's not a bad idea to take care of it like that. I'll show you what I got going on on the back side. There may not be a piece of aluminum in the world that I have uh, cut and shaped and drilled that I am, that I am less proud of than this one. I'm not sure exactly why I'm feeling that way, but I'm not very impressed. Anyway, tried to put a bolt in the middle there. I couldn't reach it with a wrench the way I have it set up. I'm referring to that bolt, bolt hole right there. Couldn't reach it with a wrench. No big deal, I don't think. Uh, these other two on either side, I can uh, I can get to with the back side. Get two from the back side with a wrench, no problem. Uh, I had to replace the screws that are along the bottom here. The uh, M4 by whatever the standard thread pitch is, uh, screws that were in there were too short. Uh, let me see if I can take them out of the stack here. They just would not pass through the, uh, the neoprene and the bellows and have any thread material sticking out the back side. So, don't know why the ones in the back were a little bit longer. I'm not sure what that's all about, but these are not going to do the trick. So, I used automotive grade, as in I had them laying around. Uh, fasteners they were probably 10 millimeters long uh, whereas these are 5 or uh, whatever They're just slightly long uh, just slightly longer certainly long enough to go through so that's it what I'm going to do right now is uh, attach this uh, like I had it trim it up I'm going to make it so that the uh, neoprene stays below where the the uh, y the x axis portion of the table slides left to right so the material should just rest against it at least in theory it, it may not happen that way once it's uh, attached but that's the idea uh, now I got to cut out for the x axis limit switch here so that's it let me finish this up and then I'll come back and uh, show the motion of the equipment in the video so the installation of all the chip guards is complete at this point. I figured I'd cover how I put the holes and the neoprene, uh, just because it's an interesting tip. At least I think it's interesting. I wanted holes that were about uh, six millimeters in diameter 
for the M6 bolts that I was using to pass through. So what I did is I took a uh, M6 nut, this, in this case this one has a flange on it, M6 bolt that I didn't particularly care about. Oh, nice. This one has a pan head on it. And then I marked the spot on the neoprene that I wanted to, uh, to put a hole in, laid the neoprene over top of the nut in that spot, made sure it was centered with the, uh, the mark that I had on top of it, uh, mostly by feel, then set the, uh, the bolt on top of it, then hit it with a hammer. Beat it a few times and then the uh, nut was through, or sorry, the bolt went through and it left these neat little neoprene plugs uh, once the holes were complete. So there's my tip there, uh, otherwise I'm done with that. Now I'm done with the y-axis front. I'm not completely pleased, pleased with the routing of this. I have a shorter bolt that I could put in there. Maybe I'll do that when I'm uh, adjusting the Gibbs the next time I go through that process. Uh, just ran the screw through the neoprene there to hold everything in place. Uh, there should be no relative motion between the, uh, the cable routing and the thread, so that shouldn't be an issue, but that doesn't mean it won't be an issue. Uh, I don't have the guard, the stainless steel uh, guard in place yet, mostly just for demonstration purposes. So, I figured I'd run it through the, uh, uh, through the motions here so I can show you what it looks like. While it's moving, I should mention that I trimmed up the uh, the flap that goes on the underside of the head here, uh, mostly to clear the coolant hoses, uh, and because I didn't think it needed to be so big. But there's still a gap in behind it so that the uh, air can get in there. But hopefully, it will minimize uh, coolant and chips uh, getting in the head. We'll see if it actually makes a difference, and if I even leave it on here, I don't know at this point. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, I guess that's it for this portion of it. Alright, so this is probably the worst case. The table's moving to the rear and the Z axis is moving down. This takes the uh, Y axis just about to its limit. It's a little bit short of that. some overflow on the table but it's still the distance between the uh, the cutting tool and the z-axis isn't changing ever so it shouldn't be a problem there assuming that it's not going to get tangled up with something that's sitting on the table of course uh, but that shouldn't be a problem all right let me jog the y-axis back and forth at this point so that you see what we're looking at And I'll do this again once I have the chip guard on so you can see how different that is there. So pretty compliant, no problems with it so far. Let me go up and make sure there's no not gonna be any pulling or anything like that. It looks like it's coming out cleanly. There could be time, I imagine, where the one piece of neoprene gets wrapped up inside of another and causes it to uh, come loose or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's not like it's a, uh, a huge issue at this point, or wouldn't be a huge issue. It's not like I'm going to crash a tool as a result of this. So that's it. I'm going to finish up uh, with the, uh, the chip guard on the front here, and I'll uh, complete the documentation then. All right, here's a quick wrap up. Most of the dimensions on the neoprene that I mentioned originally remain the same. I cut probably an inch and a half or two inches off of the z-axis. I cut three and a half inches off of the y-axis rear. And then I didn't really cut anything off of the uh, y-axis front, maybe an inch. Uh, a lot of it was just trimming up to fit. Uh, otherwise, the dimensions were the same. This, uh, the flap underneath the head was not originally uh, planned to be built in to the, uh, to the project, but uh, we'll treat it as a bonus right now if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll take it off and no big deal. Uh, 
ultimately this task has taken me a lot longer than I expected. I probably have eight hours tied up in this. Uh, more complicated than expected too with the uh, fabrication of these aluminum uh, aluminum uh, whatever you want to call them. Not really brackets but I guess that's what they are. Uh, fabrication of those took uh, certainly slowed things down. Now Tormach offers the uh, the chip flap for the y-axis rear uh, to protect that and uh, I believe the price is in the forty dollar range upper thirties maybe I don't recall the price exactly but I tell you what the uh, if you just need something minimal there's no reason to go through all this trouble uh, if I were fabricating my own uh, rear might be worthwhile it, you know you could probably throw something better I have a tendency to overdo things uh, so you might be able to figure out a way to do it easier than I than I could, but certainly worth the bucks if you just want to throw the uh, y-axis rear uh, cover on it if you're having trouble with it, keeping the y-axis bells in shape. But I wanted to do something more, uh, mostly because my enclosure is requiring me to uh, keep the the chip tray that goes around the front normally off, and that meant that I was getting uh, bellows damage on the front. So I knew I had to do something about that. I couldn't couldn't keep going with that. I can't I can't replace those uh, bellows covers regularly. There's no sense in in doing that when I can do something else. And I thought the uh, Z axis uh, would be a neat idea. Not only is it going to uh, protect the ways, but it uh, or protect the bellows cover, but it comes over far enough uh, with only I think this was uh, 14 inches in width. Only 14 inches in width. It was uh, coming over far enough that some of the coolant that's being splashed on the on the front panel here is going to be blocked as well. So this is the center line uh, along the axis of the of the spindle, and you can't see the uh, can't see the chip door. So that's going to help minimize. I'm still going to leave the uh, what is that a piece of shower curtain over that with a magnet holding in place. I still plan on doing that, uh, but this uh, adds an extra layer of protection. So I think. Uh, I think the uh, the setup is going to work well. Um, we'll see how it goes practically once I put the uh, manifold back up. You see there's immediately, as I get into position here, or close to position, see that there's immediately some interference with this. So there are a few details to be worked out still, but nothing, uh, nothing that's going to be a problem at all. So that's it. I... Uh, I, uh, I've spent more time on other projects like the enclosure and my uh, workstation here, but uh, hopefully this one will be worthwhile. Uh, naturally, I'm still worried about chip buildup back here, especially in that, uh, that little uh, tight area along the back. But uh, if worse comes to worse, or maybe I should say if push comes to shove, I can put a coolant nozzle. Uh, running coolant over the back side to keep the chips uh, the chip collection down that was always an option before uh, now that the coolant system is upgraded and it may be a, uh, a better option now the next step uh, is actually to install half inch hoses I have the quarter inch hoses on the uh, manifold now they require an additional adapter to step down with the, the size that I have. This this piece right there won't be required with a half inch hose, so that should uh, minimize some of the system losses. Uh, but I think I think I should see an improvement in uh, flow volume with that modification. So that's what's up next. Um, I uh, obviously I'm not going anywhere with the spindle. I still haven't put that thing back together yet. Uh, I've been focused on uh, doing the. The uh, modifications to the uh, what do you call this? It's getting late. Neoprene guard here, uh, the the chip flap. So that's next. I'll uh, I'll get to that, and then uh, uh, actually, what really is next is me reassembling the spindle. Who cares if the coolant system works if the uh, the spindle isn't together? So that's it. I'm gonna end it here. I guess this is my uh, Darth Vader converted Tormach mill.